I do have some disclaimers. Um, this is not meant to be nutritional advice. This is definitely not meant to me be medical advice. But, um, and I am co-founder of and vice president at Keto Mojo. Uh, Doreen and I also founded the Ketogenic Foundation. And um, also, I am a certified sommelier. I go by the moniker Keto Som. So <laughs> just because it's kind of both, you know. So as a certified sommelier, you study wine ad nauseum. You know everything about it. Very technical. Anybody see the movie Som? This wine is white, dry, clear. I mean, that's literally what you do. You, you really pick it apart. So it becomes very technical and very, um, you know, very much about the structure, the balance, the taste, the typicity. Typicity is, does a Sauvignon Blanc taste like a Sauvignon Blanc? So you really get in your head. If you've ever met wine snobs, they're annoying. And I, it's like, ugh! So as, as, you know, in the ketogenic lifestyle, I want a wine that's not going to kick me out of ketosis, that's not going to affect my body, that's minimally processed. So sometimes those two could be at odds. You know, it's like, how does that work? Well, as keto som, I want it all. I want a wine that's balanced, that tastes good, that's refined, and that's not going to affect me, affect my health or kick me out of ketosis. So the, the thing that you really have to think about is how many people drink wine, no wine, are into wine? A few. All right, great. Awesome. <laughs> this is great. So you have to look at your lifestyle. What Dorian and I went, um, this is my husband, Dorian, Mr. Mojo. Um, we went keto in 2015, and it, it, we were both in the wine industry. It was our lifestyle. So if you had said to me, Gemma, you have to give up wine now because you're going keto, I would have said no. It would have been a diet, and it would have been, oh, I'll lose, and let me tell you, I have lost 500 pounds in my life. Five here, 10 here, 50 here, 10, you know, and up and down and up and down. And it was because I went on a diet. I lost weight. I got breast cancer. I, you know, and, and then, you know, if things happen, and then you go back to where you were. You have to make it a lifestyle, so you have to make it sustainable so that you can, you can live it, right? So, I mean, the, the thing is you have to ask yourself, what is your where and what is your why? Where are you on your keto journey? Are you just starting out, metabolic tightrope, trying to figure it all out, or have you been doing it a while? When I first started on the keto journey, um, I was studying for my certification. I gave up wine for two months. Because you have to find your set point. You have to find out what works for you, right? And, and then, you know, now I couldn't get my ketones over 0.3. He lost 50 pounds in like, I don't know, a week. And it was like, oh, look at me. Yeah, my ketones are like one. I'm like, shut up. It's so not fair. And then finally, through process of elimination and testing with my keto mojo, I actually honed it in. I found out what worked for me. I slowly got wine back into my life. And now I test to see a new wine of how it affects me, and I'm, I'm making choices. So you also have to ask yourself, why are you keto? Are you keto for general health, or do you have a metabolic condition that's pretty serious? That will dictate, do you drink? How much do you drink? Why do you drink? You know, so you really have to be honest with yourself on those things. Now, the, the, the thing you really also have to understand is, where is alcohol processed? What organ? Liver. Where does ketone production happen? Liver. So which one do you think is going to take precedence? Alcohol. Alcohol. So, so that's the thing you really have to think about, is that while you're drinking, alcohol is being processed in your liver, ketone production is going to be on hold. And so it's important to understand that the more you drink, the more ketosis is in, on hold. More fat burning is going to slow down. The good news is, it will resume again, but it, it's going to happen. And secondly, probably more importantly, is that inhibition thing, right? It's like, it, we went out the other night, I have to admit, I had a dessert, and it was fine. I did okay, but I'm like, did I really need that? It was, it was not what you should, you know, you've got to think about the inhibition part of it, because that's very important. Okay, all right, already, what, a, what to look for. So the very first thing you want to look for in a wine is alcohol level. Reason being, 
It's the one thing. Wine is so confusing, right? Every country's different. Every region's different. Everything is. Wine has to, by law, every single bottle has to have the alcohol content on it. Now, the tricky part is sometimes it's on the bottom, sometimes it's on the top, sometimes it's on the back label, sometimes it's small. I spend more time at the grocery store looking, you know, okay, where is it? But what's important is that you will find it. So you're looking for lower alcohol wines. Under 13, we actually, for all of us in this room, probably under 12.5, 12.5-ish. Hard to do sometimes, especially with reds. But look for wines that are lower in alcohol. And why? Because lower alcohol means lower sugar. So in wine world, dry. Dry means low sugar. And I hate to break it to you guys, all wine has sugar. So it, seriously, I mean, you know, and I, our wine has no sugar. Okay, the fermentation process is, is yeast eats sugar, right? So it ferments. You need that to make wine, right? So the thing is that, you know, without, without that, you have no wine. The point is you want something dry where the sugar has been eaten. And, the, and fermented to the point of dry, so there's no sugar left. No, we call it residual sugar when it's left over, so that's RS, if you ever hear somebody say. And for all of us, you start to become very perceptive on sugar, right? Sugar is sweeter now, right? Things are sweeter. So wines, you will be able to taste. I guarantee you, if a wine tastes a little sweet, it's got RS. And now you can be cool and say, I think this wine is RS. <laughs> say it just like that. Um, there are some terms in, in different countries, and this gets confusing, so I'm not going down the rabbit hole, but there are certain terms like sec, secco, sect. Um, <laughs> Trocken is great for Rieslings because that means dry. What's confusing, and I'll get into it in, when we talk about champagne, is that off dry is actually <laughs> sort of sweet, and demi sec is, is sweeter than dry. Don't ask me why, I didn't make them up. So, the next thing you need to think about is cool climate. Now, you're not always going to know where a wine is from, right? But if you start thinking, now when I look at a wine list, I look at region. And I, nine times out of ten, can pick a wine that's low alcohol just by knowing where it's from. And the reason you want a cooler climate is that it's, the grapes ripen slower, right? Makes sense. Think about the grape to raisin trajectory. Grape is sort of sweet. Raisins are really sweet. If you ever taste a, a raisinated is actually a wine term. And if you taste a wine that sort of tastes like raisins, that wine has an Amarone. Anybody like Amarone? Perfect uh, example. Very raisinated. It can be 16% alcohol. That's high. So, you know, no, all wines are not created equal. People, I, I've been reading a lot of keto wine articles re recently, and they'll say things like, Sauvignon Blanc, and they always sound like this when they say it, Sauvignon Blanc is a really good choice for keto, or Chardonnay, or Merlot. You, can't, you cannot choose a wine by the varietal or the variety, because it, it matters where it's from. I, I had at Christmas, someone served me a Chardonnay. It was a very expensive Chardonnay. It was 15-1. 15, and it tasted like sugar. I'm like, oh my God, this is just horrible. Now, compare that to a Chablis, which is also Chardonnay, which is northern Burgundy, and it's 12.5, right? So start thinking about regions versus, you know, uh, the, the actual variety. Again, the warmer the climate, the higher the sugar. And in, in the trend has been later harvest, which means got more sugar. Something else to keep in mind, which I'm, again, I'm not going to go in detail, old world versus new world wines. So old world wines are wines where wine originated because it was conducive to growing. So we're talking France, Germany, Spain, Greece, Italy, even some, some places in the Middle East. New world wines are wines where winemaking is newer to the region. So US, Latin America, Canada, um, New Zealand, Australia, these regions tend to be warmer because wine wasn't, you couldn't grow grapes there effectively because it was too warm. So now, uh, but now, with technology, et voila, you can't. Now this is something you're not, probably not going to, again, it's a little technical, but 
know this. As sugar levels in grapes go up, acidity goes down. Have you ever had a huge, big, juicy root bomb cab? It's probably not a lot of, right? It's just like, wow, I could chew this. And, 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 the, and the reason is, is because the acid is so low. It's called flabby when a wine is really fat and not in a good way. So you really, you also have to be careful because acid can also mask sugar. Riesling is a perfect example. I love dry Rieslings. But you got to be careful because if you look at that bottle, you're like, oh, wow, damn it, it's 6%. Amazing. But because it's grown in such a cold re region, it, it's, it's, it's har harvested earlier. So it's going to be higher acid. And then they stop the fermentation to ameliorate, to um, balance the, the sugar and the acidity. Because if, if sometimes it's just too acidic. So you just, again, just be careful. If it's a Riesling, look for Trocken or on the back, sometimes it even says dry. But think about Coca-Cola, right? Super acidic, super sweet. Um, again, for all of us, a lot of us are metabolically damaged, so we are concerned about sulfites. I could do a whole presentation on sulfites. I'm not going to go there. But um, additives, make sure things are minimally processed. The main thing that I look for, honestly, if I'm, I'm thinking about it, is sustainably farmed, organically farmed. To have a wine be uh, organically certified is a big process, and I think it's, what, 10 parts per million? I mean, a tiny, tiny amount of sulfites can be present, and frankly, they happen naturally, and they protect wine against uh, degradation. So they serve a purpose, although some of us are sensitive, so I'm not going to go there. Um, Watch the word natural. The natural wine movement is amazing, and there's some incredible natural wines, but there is absolutely no certification process for natural wines. You could call Coca-Cola natural, seriously. I mean, you know, it's like keto products, right? You know, it's, it's, this wine is natural, and sometimes they're, they're so natural, they are actually faulted because they, they are breaking down um, organically. So. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, word on champagne. Again, confusing, but the good news is that um, the champagne tends to be lower alcohol. Champagne region is northern Burgundy. So it's in a very cool region. So by and large, the, wine, the uh, percentages are lower. Again, massive acidity. You're, gonna, you're not always going to taste the sugar, but champagne does an amazing job of labeling sweetness by law. Again, one thing about old world wines, they are law driven. So you, you start to learn the laws, then you start to understand what happens. They have to label the wines um, uh, according to their sweetness. So what we're looking for, if you can find a Brut Sauvage or Brut Nature, or non-dosage. Now, dosage is when the fermentation of uh, champagne, the second fermentation, happens in the bottle. To ignite that, they add sugar. So, in, for Brut Sauvage, Brut Nature, they don't. No sugar is added. And it's great, it's zero to three grams per liter. And then next you have Extra Brut, which is actually <laughs> just a little more dry. And then you have Brut, which most, most um, champagnes you see say Brut, right? Now, here's where it gets super confusing. Extra dry is actually sweeter than brut. It's actually at 12 to 17 grams per liter, which is getting up there, right? And then you have sec, which also means dry, <laughs> is 17 to 32 grams per liter. And then you have demi-sec, which is like half dry, is 32 to 50 liters. And then you have dew, which is a slam dunk, sweet, right, over 50 grams. So look for at least Brut, but if you can find Brut Nature, non-dosage, sometimes they call it zero, go for it. It's great. This is one of my favorite slides. Okay, so this, this shows the rise of basically diabetes, right? Obesity, uh, diabetes. What's interesting, it also shows the rise in alcohol levels. In Napa Valley, where I'm from, the alcohol minimum, or the, the average alcohol in um, up to the late 60s was probably 11 to what, 13 percent, maybe. 
Average, very lean wines, harvested early, great. <laughs> what happens, let's see, where's my little, what happens right about here? Anybody know? 1976, 77, 77? Dietary guidelines. Well, look at that. Huh, look at that. Not only does obesity rise, but so do alcohol levels. What up with that, right? I mean, how, 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 and then what I like in the 90s, you know what else happened? Cult wines. Cult wines, yeah. Screaming Eagle. Right? Oh, yeah, got to have that. Oh, my God, I have to have a 100-point wine. Those wines are 15% are alcohol because they taste like sugar. I'm not going to mention any names, but there is a wine critic who is a known diabetic, who has had knee replacements, who loves those wines, loves sweet wines. Now, I worked at a winery, Ingelnook, which uh, was really, we would do very lean, beautiful, more European-style wines. He wouldn't come taste our wines. And do you know what happens when you taste a very sweet, sugar-laden wine next to a very lean wine? It's like tasting Coke next to seltzer. Now, we would choose seltzer in this room, I know that. But a wine critic will say, that wine is just dull. That wine is flat. That wine has no flavor. So what happened was it just started to increase, and more and more people want 100-score wines, and more and more cult wines, till that's the norm. They went from picking grapes in sep uh, October, se I'm sorry, August, September, to picking grapes in late October. So you've got raisinated grapes. Then fires happen, and so they started to go back again. No. But, um, so, but what's interesting is now, we're actually starting to see a little bit of a dip because there is a movement. It's like people like us, it's conferences like this that make a change because tastes are changing. You see more on low alcohol wines. So that's my little pulpit. Um, so it can be hard to navigate. There's no truth in labeling. There's good news because there are companies like Dry Farm Wines who will send you wines and they pick them for you. They source them. They source sustainable small families. Um, Seco Wines, which again, we're pouring tonight, uh, is a great company because they care so much. And the beauty of it is that they actually are one of the first wineries or, or uh, wine companies that has a nutrition label. They show the calories, they show the carbs, they show the sugar. It's like, wow, we need more of that. We need more of that so that we can make choices and know and not guess about, you know, what we're drinking. And, you know, it's, it's important to, to start to learn what works for you and really start to investigate what's going on. Okay, don't even bother looking at this slide because it's a little messy. I have a handout for, for every, anyone who wants it. I can also send you a PDF. It will also be on, thank you, assistant. Oh, my assistant. Um, we, sorry. We, uh, we also will have it on our website. But I want to go over just a few, oops, just a few, um, a few uh, choices that are good. And again, in the white, white wine world, um, white burgundies, um, Chablis, a, you know, really great wine that is almost on any wine list, any menu, Pinot Grigio. But be careful, there can be some really crappy, excuse my French, um, crappé, uh, Pinot Grigios. Look for those that are from the northern region. Just so you know, Alto Adige is the furthest, uh, the most northern wine region in Italy. Go there. Those, those are really some lovely um, uh, Pinot Grigios. Sancerre, which is a Sauvignon Blanc, Loire Valley. If you're on a menu looking, Loire Valley tends to have cooler climate because there's a river, and it's, it's, it cools the, the grape growing. And uh, you will find uh, Muscadet is a great choice. We had one last night with, what, 11% alcohol? Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Puy Fuissé, which is also a Chardonnay from Loire. You can find some beautiful wines. Burgundy. You have to be careful. Some of the burgundies can get uh, high in alcohol. But reds, Gamay. Does anyone drink Beaujolais? Not Beaujolais Nouveau. Beaujolais Nouveau is something that's harvested in October and served in whatever Beaujolais Nouveau day is, January, something. Yeah, so it's a little, a little young. But some really amazing choices. I love dry Rieslings. I don't know, anyone like Riesling? Yeah, OK? Dry Rieslings. 
Claire and Eden Valley, Australia. Yes, New World, bone dry, beautiful. Rheingau region of um, Germany has a lot of, of uh, dry Rieslings. They also have an organization called Charta, which is dedicated to dry Rieslings. That's something else we're seeing now, more, more organizations dedicated to drier wines. Um, my absolute favorite wine, and I I'll love you if you've heard of it, Shakalina. Anybody hear of it? It's spelled T-X. Yeah. You've heard of it? So it's, it's from uh, the Basque country in Spain, very, very high elevation, bracing acidity, beautiful. So, you know, you, you start to have to look, Pinot Noir, right? Everybody loves Pinot Noir, but again, Pinot Noir from Santa Barbara is going to be much higher alcohol than a Pinot, Bar Pinot Noir from Burgundy, most likely. So the, the handout that I have is, is a lot more straightforward about some, some wines to look for, but basically, you know, you start exploring, you know, go to the grocery store, go, you know, go out to dinner and, and try some things. So, okay, in summary, what do we have? Low alcohol, right? Low sugar, dry. We want higher acid, cooler climate, and sustainable. And I'd, I want to say that, you know, have fun with it. I mean, that's the thing when you, when you study. I got addicted to wine because I started to take tastings, and then it's called deductive reasoning, deductive theory. You, you deduce what the wine is. If you start doing that for yourselves and looking at wine, and, you know, and I do still test because I want to know, is that wine, that wine kicked me out of ketosis? I'm not drinking it. Or look, I made it through. You know, we, we drink Vino Verde almost every night, and it's about 9% alcohol, about 1.2 1, 1 you know, grams per, per liter. Um, you know, and, and again, it's, 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 it's what we do. But just watch the hype. Just, if it's called a keto wine, it doesn't mean it's keto. Just like it's, it's keto snack, it doesn't mean it's keto. You have to learn what, what is good um, for you and your own bioindividuality, which is great. But thank you guys, this has been great. Any questions? on? Good. Oh, okay, and I'm sorry, Pam and Doug. We, will, Dorian and I will both be pouring the Secco wines tonight. Um, so we are doing um, Pinot Grigio, Doug, Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, and... And Cabernet. And uh, you'll be able to taste through those. Those are their, their, um, their new actual line of wines. And we do not work for the winery, so we can answer basic questions, but I'm happy to talk more about wine and anything else. And if you want me to send you a PDF, just let me know. I'll, I'll send it over to you on, on what we did. But basically, that's it. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, my only question is, um, oh, you when you a question, take a look sorry. at the effect of the wine that it has on you after tasting, are you paying attention, like, for example, uh, sometimes, and different wines will affect different people differently. Right. Um, how much do you pay attention to the glucose response in the opposite direction? Like, uh, for example, if it drives your glucose down, it may have spiked your insulin? I have not had that. I have a lot of autoimmune issues. Okay. A lot. <clears throat> so I look at a lot of things that might affect me. Typically, what will happen with me is my glucose will go up. I have... I don't think I've ever had it where my glucose drops. Glucose goes up and ketones go away, okay. basically uh, minimal. A wine that really affects me. Um, that's, that's kind of the trajectory that I've had. I have not had that response. I'm not saying it can't happen. It uh, definitely can. I, not that I've seen it yet, but is there, a, um, is there a keto version of a port wine? Of a port, port wine? <laughs> really sweet, right? I bet, you know what? I bet, I, I bet there is. It's made with monk fruit. Oh, I'm kidding. I don't know. Uh, so there's a, there's a couple of uh, questions from the, the live stream folks as well. Oh, good. I hope yeah, they're not some all folks watching you too. Huh? So, oh, I forgot. Oh, my God. I'm live. I love it. Now you're nervous. Now I'm really nervous. Okay. So, Gemma, can you hear me? I know you can't I see can me. I can hear you. You yeah. can't see me because people are standing. Um, so... I'm, 
David Robinson is um, asking, is DOC label a good indicator of purity, lower sugar for old world wines? Not necessarily. It's a good, a good indicator of quality wines. So DOC is, is more of a, a quality designation. And you also have DOCG. So in, Fran in uh, Italy, you have DOC. In France, you have AOC. So you have the, those are more old world um, law, of, I'm sorry, designations of quality. So it's not going to necessarily, you could have a DOC Amarone that is high alcohol. So it's not a, that's not a, a good demarcation, but it's a good demarcation for quality. Okay. All right, good. Um, uh, you, you offered to send the PDF, but how do people get a hold of you? Linda Wilkes is asking. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Gemma at ketomojo.com. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just uh, G-E-M-M-A at ketomojo.com. And if in doubt, send a note to support at ketomojo.com and we'll get it to you. Again, um, we're going to try to put that up on the website so that people can just access it. Oh, yeah, because you have a wine section. On yeah, I ha actually, also, I have, um, I wrote an article which has all of this in it on the website so that you will find it. Just look up, uh, if you search wine. Um, At the bottom of this live stream page, if anybody's watching it, there's a link to Keto Mojo. Just go there. Yeah. Easy and then easy. <laughs> put in wine, and then my article will come up, also my bio. But the, the article has some of the imagery, but we're, we're putting in infographics, new infographics on wine. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, I know you covered a little bit about blood sugar and ketones. Um, Stephanie P. is asking if you have alcohol at all. Regardless of low carb or sugar, won't you still get kicked out of ketosis? I know you guys check this often. Uh, I do check it often. So as I said, what happens is it, it, ketosis, fat burning will be put on hold, so it's not going to happen. I mean, it's not going to, uh, fat's not going to be burned. But I have found, and, and this is now, my, my ketones are typically, like, like I said, now run about 1.5. They're higher. And I might be kicked out of ketosis for a little bit by morning, I'm usually back into at least 0.7. So that's me anecdotally. Everybody is different. And that's why bioindividuality is important. Again, when we were first starting, Dorian was like blazing through and he could drink just fine. I had issues. And again, I have autoimmune. So anyone with anything other than one thing, <laughs> you start to compound, right? And again, if you're first starting out, just take it easy. Um, it, it will, if you're in doubt, don't drink. You know, if you're in doubt, try a little bit and see how it affects you. But the important thing here is figuring out what works for you. It will stop ketosis for a while. And some people, maybe not, actually. But you just have to kind of modulate to see how it works for you. Yeah, because I think that was the next question from Marsha. How long after drinking the wine do you it check your ketones? It totally depends. During if you've been, <laughs> again, you know, sometimes I do, do glucose and ketone testing, and they'll say, so you don't have any ketones. How, how much, you know, how much keto wine did you have last night? It's like five glasses. Okay, five glasses is a bottle. Just saying. So, you know, you have to start thinking. It depends on how much you drink, how much alcohol, sugar was in the, the wine, right? So that will tell you, and also your own metabolism, your own, um, the way you process, how metabolically fit you are. We've been doing keto, um, you know, we've been on the ketogenic lifestyle since, you know, seven years. So we're now more adapted, but it took a year before I could actually really get it going. So it totally depends on your own self. Yeah, yeah, and, and typically if, if... Can you repeat that? Uh, just, so, just, just repeat what he said. So, so uh, when you test your, for your glucose or ketones, it, typically any type of, you know, if you're testing for, um, for sensitivity of something, usually 45 minutes an hour. With alcohol, um, you know, again, if you're drinking more, it's not like you're instantly going to go out of ketosis, it, but you will, you, will see, you will see the glucose spike um, first.